Today from the Global Lane, Jesus was Palestinian and Palestinians lived in Israel long before the Jews arrived. Fact or Palestinian delusion? Ceasefire or Turkish slaughter? The truth about northern Syria. Governor Andrew Cuomo is at it again, this time restricting religious freedom rights for pro-life groups in New York. This courageous Yazidi woman confronts her ISIS rapist for the whole world to see. And it's all right here on the Global Lane. Germany says it won't go along with the U.S. policy change on Israeli settlements in the so-called West Bank. German Chancellor Angela Merkel recently said her government still considers the settlements to be illegal. The last month, President Trump announced the U.S. government no longer views the cities and communities built by Israel in Judea and Samaria to be illegal. Well, that foreign policy decision was made days after the European Union said it would require labeling of all Israeli products manufactured in the so-called West Bank settlements. Well, here to discuss this development and prospects for peace between Arabs and Jews is author and founder of Jihad Watch, Robert Spencer. Mr. Spencer's new book is The Palestinian Delusion, The Catastrophic History of the Middle East Peace Process. So, Robert, good to see you again. Great to be back. Thank you. Uh, your book, I want to talk about it in a moment, but I've got to ask you, you know, Germany has a long history of anti-Semitism and even genocide against the Jewish people. All Absolutely. of us know that. So why are we seeing Angela Merkel and the German government siding with the Palestinians on this now? Is it more anti-Semitism or is it something else? I think that it is a great deal of anti-Semitism, yes, but also the Palestinians internationally have very skillfully portrayed themselves as the victims of a heartless, cruel, rapacious Israeli war machine. And this rhetoric, which is based, as I actually show in the book, on pure fiction, on propaganda, on the manufacture of Israel Israeli atrocities, that nonetheless it has been very successful as a propaganda campaign and makes people like Angela Merkel and others think that they're on the humanitarian side when they back the Palestinians. I think in your, your book you mentioned some of the incidents where uh, people are considered dead in front of the cameras and then they get up and walk yes. away after the cameras turned off. But Absolutely. What impact do you think this new policy from President Trump is going to have on these settlements? and the Israeli peace process. Well, I hope that it uh, gives them confidence that they are going to be able to remain there indefinitely and that there are more of them because, as you pointed out, you noted uh, a moment ago, it's Judea and Samaria. Those are the names that that area has had since time immemorial. And it's only since 1948, that actually 1950, that the territory was renamed the West Bank by Jordan precisely in order to obscure the fact that it is is Jewish land that Jews have lived on for centuries. And in reality, there is no illegality to any Israeli settlement anywhere in that territory, which only belongs by international law to the state of Israel. There is no other state that can legitimately lay claim to it. And they always say, of course, in the media, occupied yeah. West Bank. And it's like, well, you don't say occupied New Mexico, Arizona, California, because yes. the U.S. won that territory in the, America, uh, the Mexican War. Uh, now to the book. Let's begin with a claim that the Palestinians have always been on the land long before the Israelis or the Jews came there. Well, of course, there's the famous quote from Mark Twain when he went through that area in the late 19th century and said that it was absolutely desolate. He would go for miles and miles without seeing a single human being. Uh, also, there is the evidence of the Palestinian names, the, their surnames that are common, that often betray origins from somewhere else. There is also a, an abundance of other records that I have in the book of uh, people going through the area and saying, we didn't see anybody. We saw some Jews over here, and then we would go for miles and not see anybody, and there were a few Christian Arabs here and there. But in terms of there being a, a Muslim Arab presence, that actually comes from after the Zionist settlement began in earnest, and Jews started to move into the area in large numbers. The Arabs then moved in next to them in order to benefit financially from their presence. Now, how about the claim, and I'm sure you've heard this, I've heard it too, uh, from Palestinians that uh, Abraham, Moses, and even Jesus were Palestinians. Yes. Where did that come from? What? <laughs> That's from the Quran. The Quran portrays all of those and many other biblical figures as Muslim prophets who taught Islam. And then the idea is 
that the uh, followers of those prophets twisted and hijacked their teachings to create Judaism and Christianity. So Jesus himself, th according to this view, was a Muslim prophet who taught Islam, but then the apostles and the other followers of Jesus actually misrepresented and misunderstood and twisted his teachings to create Christianity. Now, this is, of course, ridiculous on so many levels. There's no biblical evidence for it. There's no historical evidence for it. There is, uh, in Islam, the idea that there was an original gospel that was twisted into the New Testament, but that doesn't exist. There's no, no manuscript evidence of it and so on. So it, the whole thing is absurd, but on that basis, it's really a, a replacement supremacist claim that they can say we embody the true form of Judaism and Christianity and thus we have a greater right to Jerusalem and the Holy Land in general than anybody else. So really it's replacing the Jews and the Christians oh, yeah. in the Holy Land. Absolutely. Now another one, another claim is that, well, uh, the Jews forced us out of, of Palestine, yes. uh, but you say that's, that's not true, that it actually came from Muslim leaders who encouraged them to leave after 1948. Tell me that's about right. that. That's right. Specifically, it was the Arab Higher Committee, and there is abundant record, I have it in the book, of uh, the Arab Higher Committee being publicly known as having told the Arabs to leave in 1948 because they thought that they were going to crush Israel in a matter of weeks and then the Arabs would be able to move back. And you spent quite a bit of time in the book about the peace process and the history over the years and it really you show that it has been a failed process. Um, what can be done now? Well what we need to do in the first place is end it. It was based on false premises and uh, it's never going to work. It's only as far as the Palestinians and their supporters are concerned, a means in order to weaken Israel, means by which they can weaken Israel. And, and you say it's really not a political war here, it's more spiritual. There's no doubt about that, yeah. The idea is that uh, the Muslims must follow the Quran, drive them out from where they drove you out. That's what the Quran says in chapter 2, verse 191. That is the cornerstone of their approach to Israel. They claim they were driven out. Now, we've already discussed they were not actually driven out, but that's a staple of their propaganda. And on that basis, they say they have a responsibility before Allah to drive the Israelis out. It's like, it's, it's as if it were one of the Ten Commandments as far as they're concerned. Well, Robert Spencer, the book is The Palestinian Delusion. Thanks so much for being with Pleasure, us. Pleasure, Gary. Thank you. Come home to the sounds of Southern Gospel from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern Gospel favorites like the Gaithers, the Crab Family, and bluegrass sounds like Mountain Faith. So make yourself at home with the all-new CBN Southern Gospel, now available at CBNRadio.com. Meet the pastors who are preaching the gospel in a fresh, fearless way. I'm Roberto Torres Cedillo. Join me each week for Next Gen Voices. And watch God transform a generation. Prophecy thousands of years old. We were called to be a light to the world. Being fulfilled today. <laughs> Discover how. Get to life. Call 1-800-700-7000. We consider it our duty to reach out and help others around the world. For a gift of $10 or more, you can own the acclaimed CBN documentary to life. Just call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. To treat a human, no matter what he is, which religious he have, which color he is, this is what I'm doing. See how the people of Israel are fulfilling prophecy. History is being written, and I want to be a part of it. By sharing their knowledge. In Africa, in Asia, in South America, in East Europe. And their love. This is how we work. This is us. Get to life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. Winter is fast approaching in the Middle East and tens of thousands of Kurds and others are internally displaced because of the Turkish invasion of northern Syria. 
fighting is ongoing despite an agreed ceasefire. Well, joining us is CBN contributing correspondent Chuck Holton. He recently joined the Free Burma Rangers in northern Syria, where you came under fire there. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, quite a few times, actually. Uh, there's no ceasefire at all. That area that they call the, the exclusionary zone, that 30-kilometer strip of land in northern Syria along the Turkish border, has really become a genocide zone. And anybody that stays there is, is going to be killed. So they want to clear it out entirely. They are. And the Free Syrian Army has been going through there and just, just pillaging everything in its path. Now, tell people, who are the Free Syrian Army? Most people don't haven't even heard of it. Right. The Free Syrian Army is a, are, are Turkish-backed militia, but they're made up of guys who were fighting for ISIS a couple years ago, and they just switched sides when Raqqa fell and went to work for the Free Syrian Army. So the Free Syrian Army started out as something different, but it's transformed into kind of the United Nations of Islamic Jihad at this point. And these are Arabs who are fighting against Kurds. Exactly. And uh, with the air support and artillery support from Turkey, they are able to really put the hurt on the Kurds. Now, I think without that air support and artillery support, it'd be a pretty fair fight, but it's not right now. What do you want people to know that they might not know? about northern Syria and the situation there? You know, I think that Christians need to understand especially that these... these we created a space for democracy to flourish in that area by being there, just by our presence. Our troops that were in Syria were not on the front lines. They were not fighting. They were on bases, and they were there as a presence that created that space for democracy to flourish. When we leave, then that space gets filled by the Russians and the Iranians and the, the Syrian army under Bashar al-Assad and, the, and Turks. the Turks, yeah. and none of those are good options. And so we may have lost our chance to create a budding democracy in that area. But as you know, Americans have no taste for uh, entrenchment in the Middle East, another war like we saw in Iraq. We're still in Afghanistan after 18 years. So what are the options now? I get asked a lot if it's been worth it for us to be there, and my answer is always the same. It's absolutely worth it, regardless of the fact that we've spent a billion dollars a week in Afghanistan, and it's probably worse now than it was when we started. Uh, it, it, it was worth it on the principle of it. Uh, we were attacked on, yes. on, on September 11th, 2001, and we need our enemies around the world to know that if you attack us, we will go to the mat to defend ourselves. We will go to the mat to take you down, even if it takes 18 years and, you know, billions of dollars to do. And uh, in Syria, ISIS, actually, some of them attacked in the U.S., right? At least some lone wolves that's connected correct. to ISIS. Right, and, and what we're setting the stage for now is ISIS 2.0 with air support, and that's not good. Uh, and uh, Erdogan would love nothing more than for ISIS to take over that strip of land and create a buffer between him and the Kurds. Uh, but I think he has bigger designs than that on the whole of Syria. And a major humanitarian crisis, perhaps one of the worst in the world right now. Yeah. Uh, tell us how the people are doing. Are they getting any food, any help from the outside world? It certainly is one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world. And uh, no, the people are not getting the help that they need. Most of the aid organizations that were in Syria have pulled out because it's, not it's safe. too dangerous. Yeah. And so there are very few left. And mm. the local aid organizations are not able to come up with very much in the way of resources because they became so dependent dependent on those international aid organizations that are now gone. So uh, most of the supplies for like al Hasaka and the places in central Syria where those internally displaced people are going came from Turkey. And well, now that that border is closed, they, they're not getting resupplied. And so it's a much longer, more dangerous trek to come across from Iraq in order to resupply. And it's tough for them as winter sets in now, That's right. I'm sure. That's right. I want to move on here, Chuck, because you have a new book out called mm -hmm. Prowess. And this is your latest one. Why that title? Well, uh, prowess just means the the uh, intentional display of manly power. And what we find today is that young men spend so much time interacting with devices that they they don't learn those manly lessons that they used to learn. You know, a hundred years ago, when a guy turned eighteen, he had been he had already spent ten years with the men. By the time he was eight years old, you know, he was out in the fields. Sure. He was throwing hay. He was splitting firewood. He was doing the things that men do. Hunting. And he was, yeah, hanging around with the men. Today's young men mostly are raised by women.
women, their, their mothers, their teachers, even their scoutmasters at this point are women. And they don't have role models. They have role models, but they don't have mentors, pe- men to pour into them and to be intentional about teaching them what manhood is all about. So a lot of them, because of my previous books, contact me and email me and ask me questions. And I just noticed that I was getting the same questions over and over again about how do I find a girlfriend? How do I get a job? How do I prove myself as a man? And so I took that correspondence and sort of condensed it into this book, Prowess. And based on biblical principles. That's right. It's, it's just the man you were meant to be. It's not saying that every man's supposed to be a Navy SEAL or anything sure, like that. Sure. It, it's the, being the, the man that God created you to be, whatever that happens to be, and f- how to figure out what that is. And I saw you post a Facebook photo with Alveda King. Yeah, and she was holding she up the book. Yeah. Can, can a woman have prowess? Well, well absolutely. <laughs> and actually, there's a chapter in the book written specifically to girls because I think so many young women don't understand their own value and so they end up throwing their pearls before swine as it were and that's why we've all you know met, met these women and you see the men they're with and you go how did, what made them choose that guy it's because they don't understand their own worth and so the yes. first guy to show them a little affection or something mm. boom he gets their heart and they end up re- regretting that and so not the, the one that God has had for them exactly yeah. and and you know a lot of guys that's the big question how do I know how do I find the right one or how do I know she's the right one and the answer to that is that's the wrong question The question is, how do I become the right one? And when you're the man that you're called to be before God, then you could theoretically choose any Christian woman who's not made ill by the side of you, and you could make her your wife, and you could make her happy forever because you're doing what you're called to do. And that would be meeting her needs that she's hardwired to to need from a man. And I know you have that example in your own marriage. That's right. That's right. Well, it's good to have you back from Syria safely, despite that firefight yeah. that uh, you find yourself Always glad to come in. back with the same number of holes as I left with. Because <laughs> we're looking forward to this and also many more. Right. So, Chuck, thanks for being with okay, us. Okay, thank you. Too often, we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Takun Olam. This is our nature as a country. To make the world a better place. Literally, we felt the earth shaking. The Christian Broadcasting Network presents To Life, how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. This film needs to be seen by everyone. I was in tears. Now you can own the inspiring documentary To Life on DVD. There is blood on our hands if we know and we walk away. I'm so grateful that this film was made. To Life can be yours for a gift of $10 or more. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. We know that every minute counts to save life. It'll uh, bless Israel, but it'll also bless all the friends of Israel. Discover the untold story of how Israeli volunteers are making the world a better place. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com to get your copy today. Religious freedom under fire, this time in the state of New York. Governor Andrew Cuomo recently signed legislation that forces pro-life crisis pregnancy centers and religious advocacy groups to hire workers who actively support abortion. Well, here to explain what this new law means for churches and faith groups is Denise Harley. Ms. Harley is legal counsel at the Alliance Defending Freedom. So, Denise, we saw people cheer with shouts of joy when Governor Cuomo signed a bill last year allowing abortion in New York State. Uh, right up until birth. Remember that one? Well, now this. Please explain what the new law means for pro-life and religious groups. 
That's right. This is the third in a series of very pro-abortion laws that New York has passed this year. Uh, this one just comes down to the fact that all Americans are free to live and work according to their beliefs. But what New York has done is decided that the state government is going to force faith-based and religious organizations to hire people that disagree with their pro-life views. And that's unconstitutional. Well, it seems that uh, this is really advocacy on the part of the state of New York. So pro-life and religious groups were not exempted from this law. Why weren't they exempted? Because that's who New York was targeting. New York is demeaning religious organizations, churches, and pro-life groups, and essentially saying that your good faith difference of opinion has no business here. And so what they're trying to do is to punish places like our clients, First Bible Baptist Church and Compass Care Pregnancy Center, and forcing them to operate in a way that's not consistent with their values and their core mission. These are charities and churches that affirm life from conception to natural death. And under this law, they are forced to employ people who may advocate for abortion. Denise, it seems this goes beyond just a violation of religious freedom and freedom of speech and so forth. Uh, it seems like discrimination. Is this discrimination? This is absolutely hostility towards a religious viewpoint. And the Supreme Court has made clear over and over again, including last year in Masterpiece Cake Shop, that the state government cannot express hostility to certain religious viewpoints. The First Amendment protects against that, and that sort of discrimination has no place in our free society. What are the ramifications then for the rest of the country? How likely might we see similar legislation in other states? Well, we feel very confident that this law is going to be struck down, and that's what we've asked the courts to do. The First Amendment is completely clear that a state cannot come in and say what a church can say or not say, or believe or not believe, or who a church can associate with. So we think this law is going to fail. But unfortunately, states like New York do try to sort of test the waters and um, float these sorts of ideas out there. So we're hoping to nip it in the bud and not to see this sort of unconstitutional discrimination towards pro-life viewpoints in a society that needs places like pregnancy care centers to serve and love women and help to encourage them to choose life for their babies. You said ADF is challenging this uh, law in court. So t tell us a little more about that. Does that go to the state Supreme Court in New York or the U.S. Supreme Court? Uh, what's the next step? So we filed a lawsuit in federal district court, and we have also filed for a, a preliminary injunction, which means we've asked the court to immediately stop the law because on its face, it violates the First Amendment in at least three ways. It violates what these organizations can say and not say because it prevents them from even having a moral code of conduct for their organization and for their employees. It violates their free exercise of religion because it prevents them from living out their beliefs by forcing them to essentially endorse and associate with beliefs they don't believe in. And three, it violates their free association under the First Amendment because it says who they can and can't hire and employ. So those are the grounds for our complaint, and we're hoping for a fairly swift resolu resolution in the federal district court. Okay, Denise Harley, please uh, keep us posted on how this progresses. You're with the Alliance Defending Freedom. Thank you so much for those insights. You're well. Thanks, Gary. It's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. From Washington, D.C., uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists David Brody, Escalating Fight, Jenna Browder, Knows his words carefully, Ben and Kennedy, Plan to join him, and Amber Strong. For impeachment, grows a little bit louder. Bringing you the political news that matters. We get out and tell the story of the progress that we're making in this country. Watch Faith Nation, weeknights at 6 on the CBN News Channel. 
We will move the American embassy to the eternal capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. As the nations rage, you can stand with Israel. History is being written, and I want to be a part of it. Call 1-800-700-7000 and get to life. This is our nature as a country. Discover the untold story of how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. We consider it our duty to reach out and help others around the world. For a gift of $10 or more, you can own the acclaimed CBN documentary to life. To treat a human, no matter what he is, which religious he has, have, which color he is. This is what I'm doing. Support Israel in their time of need. Get to life. Now available on DVD. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. And I wish that other people throughout the world could see this side of Israel. It's a shocking and rare confrontation for the entire world to see. A viral video shared on social media by the Clarion Project. It's a video of a Yazidi woman who was kidnapped by ISIS jihadists in Iraq in 2014. She was raped several times daily while in captivity. And now, five years later, this courageous woman confronts her rapist on national television. Take a look at a portion of it. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelmed by trauma and emotion, she finally collapses. Folks, this is the reality for thousands of Yazidi women and others who were abducted and abused by ISIS. They need trauma counseling, and few volunteers are providing it. But did you notice in the video not a word of remorse, no repentance, or request of forgiveness from the jihadist? He only bowed his head in embarrassment and shame. Also missing from all of this, no words of condemnation from Muslim leaders followed by concrete actions against Islamic extremism. Hateful sermons against Jews and Christians are still preached in many mosques and Islamic religious schools around the world. Just ask Christians in countries like Pakistan and Egypt. They'll tell you all about it. So why not shut them down? Pass laws against religious hate speech that leads to violence. And what about jail time for those who rape and abuse women? Many hardline Muslim scholars reject that idea. They believe it's okay because the Quran allows it. Folks in the Christian faith, men are taught to love and respect their wives. Not all men who call themselves Christian follow that command, but true followers of Christ do. And in Matthew 7, verse 12, Jesus tells us, Whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Now, this includes wives, daughters, people of either sex, all races, ethnicity, every one of us. And what about those ISIS fighters who committed atrocities against women and got away with it? They may have escaped man's justice, but in the end, those jihadists and none of us will escape God's judgment. Well, that's it from the Global Lane. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Twitter. And until next time, be blessed.